Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. So uh, for some, the volunteers are mercenaries, and for others, the mercenaries are volunteers. So we got that right, right? When the Russians are talking about the Ukrainian uh, volunteers, they usually call them mercenaries, foreign mercenaries, and vice versa. When the Ukrainians are talking about the Russian volunteers or the foreign volunteers in the Russian uh, military, uh, they're called mercenaries. Remember, the Wagner Group is a mercenary uh, company, is not or was not a military, uh, private military contractor. But Blackwater, of the of America, which switched into something else, um, is called a um, private military company. Okay, now, contractors. So what do we have here? Tens of thousands of African mercenaries are fighting on Russia's side against the good people of the West. Do you believe that? Now, I believe that they are people from Africa fighting on the Russian side. Now, I don't know if there are tens of thousands or hundreds or tens of people, uh, dozens. So uh, I will let you know. I have two uh, little articles here and a map to show you what the Ukrainians are telling us about this African mercenaries. First article, Ukraine form. Both of them are actually from Ukraine form, but one is from the 16th of February 2024 and the other one is from the 5th, uh, 17th. So one is from yesterday, the other one is from today, the same Ukraine form. Ram pam pam. This is from the 16th, right there. Tens of thousands, could be 99 thousands, uh, of mercenaries from Africa and Asia fighting on side of Russia in Ukraine, National Resistance Center. So Asian uh, people also fight on the Russian side. Tens of thousands of citizens of Asian and African countries, like what, are fighting on the side of the Russian army. You should know what countries, since you know they are from Africa, otherwise, <coughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you know they're from Asia or from Africa, you have to know what country they come from, because you can't just look at them and say, hey, you're from Africa, hey, you're from Asia, because, you know, race is a social uh, construct, is not a reality, we're told here in this fucked up uh, educational system. Anyway, uh, here you have, this was reported by the National Resistance Center, Ukraine Forum reported. Russians, and I'm quoting, Russians continue to recruit mercenaries in Africa and Asia. Foreign mercenaries are trained in Russia and then sent to the territory of Ukraine. The Russians promised them a salary of $2,000 to $4,000, but pay several hundred dollars in support. All right, well, what do you want them for free? The volunteers are not fighting for free, if I remember correctly, in Ukraine. Uh, supposedly, uh, a volunteer is paid the same amount as a uh, Ukrainian um, soldier is paid. That's for, therefore, they aren't mercenaries or something like that. They're not, they're not volunteer for nothing. They get money for that. So, right, it's not uh, you know, that kind of volunteering. Here it is. Uh, the aggressor uses them mainly to storm Ukrainian positions. You know what's interesting? If you have been following um, the West media, Western media, and not only they give you the impression that the Russians somehow are mamelukes, you know, like without balls, uh, let's put it this way, or, you know, they are uh, people that cannot fight, uh, unlike the Ukrainians and the Americans and this fat fox here. No, 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 no. The Russians are just weak and they're just uh, you know, feeble. Is that how we call it? Feeble? Okay. I said feeble, I didn't say. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, they think that way and the Russians always need other people to fight for them or slash and the Russians use others because that's the imperialistic powers do. They use auxiliary forces. Therefore, they don't want to use their fantastic nation to die, right? But they use others. So you see how bad they are? But they don't grab them. You know, they don't just offer them a deal like McDonald, the McDonough, McDonough tell you, hey, buy this garbage bugger for this amount. And you decide, 
that burger would cause me these medical problems probably uh, i'm gonna get fat as hell that's for sure so i don't know what else is gonna create i mean fat is not good for you obviously fat uh, and grease um, could result in certain kind of situations medical i'm not saying that that's a you know that's the first one and i am the decision maker if i decide to pay i don't know how much because i don't uh, frequent uh, mcdonough or Burger King or all these guys win these uh, all right if you decide that the deal is good okay I think I'm gonna eat this burger for let's say eight dollars and let's say a Big Mac meal I don't even know how much that is nevertheless that's my choice you can do that as a free person you can do that you can consciously uh, do this to your own life the same here. The Russian said, okay, I'm going to pay you $2,000 or $4,000 if you come and fight over there and there's a possibility you get hurt in the process or... So it's your choice. You're in front of a McDonough menu. Should I buy that over there for $2,000 or I shouldn't? I think I'll do it. So they don't, they're not forcing anybody. You have to show self-restraint, self-control. Otherwise, you go and fight and maybe that's in your own interest. I'm okay with the other guys doing the same thing. It's not just the Russians defending whatever. No, it's not like they grabbed you and they made you fight. You can't really do this with a person that you're going to give him a weapon after you grab him from the fields, you know. Imagine, for instance, the, those bad dudes in Africa grabbing their own people, uh, you know, and giving them weapons and then put them on the, the other guys' boats. <laughs> they would have um, created a little problems on the territory you know those guys going inside their own tribes going and getting those and enslaving them and bring give, bring them to the coast and then those uh, profiteers getting them to sell them in the americas and all but it's only one example i mean that's out of this uh, slavery of the planet but these guys choose to focus on that one why because they want us to fight one another anyway that was bad yeah gone yeah gone it's gone i know in certain areas in africa it's not gone uh, and I know in Libya there's a slave market as of now. And, uh, why? Gaddafi did not have it. Who has it? Oh, they brought freedom and democracy. Forgot. Let's move on, mother. And I'm quoting, however, there is no easy money. No, it's not. I mean, it is if you work for the government in certain positions. And the price for war crimes is growing in Ukraine. Already 400,000 liquid, liquidated Nazis of the Russian armed forces testified to this. I thought that you guys were the Nazis, not the Russians. What's going on here? Oh, projection? My bad. So this, but not personally, the National Resistance Center notes, not personally. As reported, foreign students are being recruited. Recruited is, you know, I offer you the McDonough, you want the deal, go and eat it. Into the army in the Russia by blackmail. Yeah, okay, I want to see how that happens. Oh, the article is uh, ended. <laughs> Yeah, and they let you with the blackmail. And do you think you can inform that I believe you? Let's move on. But you don't use blackmail. No, because they come from abroad. <laughs> Why would people go anyway and study in that garbage of right? What do the Russians know, right? They should come to America and other Western countries. Here is where knowledge is. Russians, why would they go over there and train themselves in what? Those guys don't know shit. Can you see their weapons? Psst. can't compare them with our weapons man we know everything look at the uh, Nobel Prize laureates <laughs> Obama is a peace prize uh, Nobel, Nobel laureate before he did anything and he did a lot of garbage in that realm anyway but he accepted it that tells you the character mercenaries from Africa appear in occupied Kherson region all right where is Kherson baby doll Kherson is uh, right here in the south in this region so but north of uh, the Crimean Peninsula so this is where they say they are uh, fighting Kherson this area the Africans elected in the south why because it's warm or something be careful <laughs> You can't make shit up here. Mercenaries from Africa appear in occupied Kherson. Mercenaries from, Af from the African con continent, like what countries, man, were spotted in all... How do you mean you, spot you spotted them? I mean, you, you, they were Africans. Nah, nah, that's not good. They were spotted in Oleski, 
in the temporary occupied territories of the Kherson region. They were spotted. Deputy director, maybe they were Americans. Maybe they were French. I think they were French. How do you know they were African? I think they were French. Don't believe me? Look at the French Le Bleu uh, football team. <laughs> Mbappe and all those guys. What? Uh, nine out of 11 are French. <laughs> so yeah, how do you know they were not French? God damn it. Remember a person who never traveled to France. Let's say a teenager. Let's say he's 13, 14 and he likes football and he watches the World Cup and he sees the fr French national team. Then let's say he's never seen any French before. He's going to think the French are like Mbappe, all of them, or at least 95%. So remember that guy, they write here, oh, we, we saw them. How do you know they were not French? A teenage guy will ask, right? Or someone else. And when I say teenage guy, I'm talking about the big majority of our population that's at the same level of baboonish. You know? Oh, that's, an, that's a French guy. Or not only French, American too. How do you know? After all, I mean, look at the American uh, military, Pentagon. Who's in charge? African-American. Mr. Brown, African-American. So you got two of the biggest, the strongest, supposedly. I don't think they're in charge, but nevertheless, nobody would let them. They're just over there as figureheads. So let's say Brown and Austin, they're all, both of them, they're of African descent. So let's say they show up over there with these guys, say, Africans or Americans? Tricky. Oh, you got Kamala Harris, which is half Indian, half Haitian. Isn't she Haitian? Isn't she? Yes, she is, but she's African-American. can make shit up, man. This. Again, Obama is uh, first black uh, president or African-American. No, he's uh, biracial. Half is white, half is black, if you want to go that way. And he was raised by the white family, but he identifies as black. Is that uh, treason? Why would you identify as black when your father left you? Like a garbage. And the other guys pick up the tab for your fucking father, huh? Alicia Keys, remember that? Yeah, who got her to play piano? Her white grandparents, I guess, right? Again, my friends, uh, or not? Uh, I have so many examples of this kind of uh, you know situations where they I identify as a victim instead of looking back. Well, I have this because of that, but hey, fuck you, I identify as this. You can do that, but I can also see it and say it out loud. You're a motherfucker, but that's your choice. Mercedes from African continent. Okay, according to Danny Love, <laughs> the most trusted man in a business, CNN right here, DNN. The comments remind remind him that African mercenaries were spotted in Chap Chaplinka even earlier when they bought warm clothes. <laughs> Danny Love, you see, Danny Love did not get the memo. You don't say these kind of things uh, here. You wouldn't say that. Where they brought. Uh, what is it? When they brought warm clothes and blankets at the market. That's a giveaway. Well, that's stereotyping, Danny Love. You're a racist. In America, that's how you would call, but somehow you're not called here. Why? <laughs> we use the racist in this case against Russians. Racist, right? Civilian injured in enemy. As you can form reported. Man, I can't. I can't, you know, it's just, you don't need a lot of, uh, a lot of information to figure out that these guys uh, are giving us whatever they give us at a very low baboonish level because they deal with baboons. They don't have to um, convince all of us or all the members in the society. You don't have to do that. You have to convince some very aggressive uh, um, a baboon, 40% of the population, that's all you need. And they are really very verbal because they are very, uh, they are with pathos, not with logos. And you know, with uh, a lot of passion, when you have a lot of passion, but not too much brain, you become very, very baboonish, like aggressive, like an animal. Uh, so yeah, you just need those guys. And those guys will argue with you by parroting back this kind of things that Danny Love provided. Uh, we know they're Africans because they got warm clothes. Okay. No, I think they're from uh, from France. That's what I think. You can't make me. They come from France from Marseille. 
from Marsilia, okay, from Marseille, coming from Marseille, right there by the port, by the uh, Mediterranean Sea, warm, nice, so can I, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you can make sure that, man, anyway, the fact is tens of thousands, now tens of thousands could be 20,000, or could be 99,000, or maybe it could be, I don't know, uh, why just up below 100,000, Thank you very much for being with me again today. I have no doubt there are mercenaries involved in, on both sides. It's just funny how these guys are, are trying to convince the baboons that they are the good ones and the other ones are the bad ones. So if you give me a dollar, that's a good dollar. If you give them a dollar, that's a bad dollar. Good McDonough, bad McDonough. The same McDonough. McDonough. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.